This is the SEO Mindset Podcast with your hosts, Sarah McDowell and Tasmin Sullivan. This podcast is for SEO professionals and each week with the help of our wonderful guests, we discuss the important stuff that actually affects our careers and progression, but sadly often doesn't get talked about. You know, the invaluable soft and interpersonal skills that are often taken for granted, such as the skills we need for listening, time management, communication, and more. We also talk about the big issues that affect us and our careers, such as burnout, imposter syndrome, self-belief, saying no, plus other big issues and obstacles. With this podcast, we want to share knowledge on topics that unlock our listeners' true potential and enhance not only their careers, but all parts of their lives. So are you ready to prioritize your own personal growth and career development? Then let's crack on with this week's episode. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another episode of the SEO Mindset podcast with myself, Tasman Suleiman. In today's episode, I'm talking to Jordan Cooney about the SEO job market and how to scale your SEO talent. Jordan is a CEO and co-founder of Previsible, a search education and consulting practice. They currently support Fortune 100 companies with investments in organic search. He's also a key advisor and board member within the search software and e-commerce industries. Now, before we dive into the podcast topic for the week, a gentle reminder that if you're enjoying our podcast and find the content valuable, then you can support us by donating via Buy Me A Coffee There is a link in the show notes and you'll get more information there. Another way to support us is by subscribing to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Go to the seomindset.co.uk forward slash listen. And again, that link is in the show notes. So, Jordan, welcome. How are you? Doing very well, Tasman. Now, really excited to be here with you today and, and sharing with your podcast listeners. So, Jordan, do you want to tell us a little bit about, I mean, I've, I've introduced you, do you want to tell us a little bit sure. more about yourself and then we can get into the topic of today? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, uh, I have, you know, kind of a unique background in the sense that uh, just about my entire career has been in the SEO space. Um, a few deviations there from time to time, but for the most part, uh, I've, I've basically been focused on organic search. Uh, I started in, in the early 2000s. So in 2001, I built a Spanish bookstore, uh, wow. mylibros.com. And I gained some recognition in the SEO space because I was outranking Amazon for Spanish book titles, both in English and in Spanish, uh, author names, categories. And back then, if I may remind our listeners, some of them might not know this, but Amazon only sold books. So I was going to head to head against this 800 pound gorilla and everyone was wondering, how is this kid in St. Louis, Missouri? That's where I was living at the time, beating out uh, this, um, you know, investment banker, you know, going to the moon extraordinaire entrepreneur, Jeff Bezos. And, uh, you know, it was, it was partly dumb luck. My father was a teacher and uh, he told me to apply for, uh, for all these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, school districts where you where you can become a a, a, a licensed vendor or a or a approved vendor, uh, and when that would happen, I'd get the webmaster of the school district, and I would send him an HTML page that would promote my business, and they would upload that page on all these .edu websites. And back then, if you had a link from a .edu website, it was like gold. <laughs> um, so this this unbeknownst strategy uh, uh, recommended by my father, who candidly doesn't really know what I'm doing, um, ended up really panning out and helping scale my little bookstore. Uh, but that started my career. I, I've had a you know a, a lot of fun working for various enterprise sites throughout the, the 2000s. Uh, I spent four and a half years at eBay as the director of SEO and content development. Six years at Searchmetrics as the CEO of the company, which is a large data player. 
um, and, and platform in the SEO space. And then now recently, as you shared, I am the CEO co-founder of Previsible, um, where we're, we're an agency consultancy, um, but also focused on really people development. We have a whole recruiting arm to our business where we help recruit and, 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 and place talent in companies, um, as well as a training division where we're, where we're working with training and developing teams as well as individuals and, and believe strongly that that is, that is a key ingredient to the future success of, of SEOs. And, and we will be talking about the SEO job market today and, um, and, and your advice on it. So tell me, you, we were talking before about how the, the roles within SEO professionals have changed and the demand has changed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, over the, over the course of the last, you know, 10 or so years, uh, what you notice is that there's a real transition around how companies and organizations think about SEO. Um, it, it, it was a novelty, you know, a decade ago, even 15 years ago, in the sense that maybe there was a, a small community of large enterprises that really knew how to build it out, really understood how to deal with the product components of SEO, as well as the content and marketing components of SEO. Um, and, and, and that is a really expanded where now there are SEO roles in traditional companies, everything from financial institutions um, to grocery stores to, you know, all kinds of different verticals. But we're also seeing a transition in terms of how the SEO role uh, plays in vital ecosystems. Um, you know, one of the most exciting things living here in the Bay Area is I'm seeing uh, venture capital as well as private equity firms, companies who are investing in startups, hire SEOs and have them sit at the table of making these key decisions of whether I invest, how should I, how should I think about the SEO journey of this company before I buy. And, and, and I think that that's really valuable because it, it changes the playing field of what is the responsibility of an SEO and how do we communicate about the business value that this channel drives and not just the tactical you know, changes and tweaks that we might make to a website, but more broadly, how does this relate to the financials, the leadership, uh, and the, the entire people behind a company? So what's changed then? Um, there's, there's, a, there's a difference in the sense that SEOs now have a, a different place at the table. So they, they're, they're sitting at a different table than before, right? Before that table was, hey, file a ticket and maybe I'll consider doing this. And now the conversation has moved way upstream to, is this the right investment for my company? And if so, how do I invest? And so that, that's a really key place to be. Um, and in and our sister industry, right, our paid search industry, they, they were at that table a long time ago. They were at the strategy table a long time ago because it was dollars and cents. Right, some CMO was going to give you a hundred million dollars to go invest in paid search, and you you better get me an ROI on this, right? And and SEO took a while to really get to the to that to that level of of strategy and exposure, and and we're there now, and and I and I candidly believe that much more so than than where we were ten years ago as an industry. The other thing that's changed dramatically is the opportunities for all of us as SEOs has radically changed. Um, there is a whole different set of companies and organizations, even agencies. There's a whole set of agencies who are hiring on SEOs that just five, 10 years ago would have never thought of hiring an SEO. Creative agencies, PR agencies, all these organizations are bringing on SEO talent to be part of their ecosystem. And that creates new opportunities for us. It creates different work-life balance environments. It creates uh, new, new development and growth opportunities if we want to learn new skills. Um, you know, I used to hear a lot from SEOs 10 years ago. I really don't want, I really hate the fact that I'm an SEO because I have no mobility. I don't have, I can't go in any other direction. I can maybe become a product manager or maybe become like a content marketer, but I don't want to do either of those. And today there's more opportunities across other verticals and across other industries than ever before. Would you be able to give us some examples? Because, you know, you were saying that um, SEO is now at the table. Um, there, there will be companies where they're not yet. What would be your advice to those? 
<laughs> that's a that's a great question, Tasman. <laughs> it's and it's uh it's a uh, it's a real challenge, I think, for for some SEOs when you're when you're not sitting at the table and you feel like uh, you might be uh, marginalized or deprioritized in your organization. And you know, there's there's a couple of key pieces to that journey, um, and one of them is uh, really spending time. Um, looking inward at what is the value drivers that SEO is aligning to with respect to the business. And uh, one of the realities is that there's, there's a lot of companies who choose to invest in SEO, but don't understand the value drivers and don't understand the connection of what this channel can do and, and how it can generate growth or traffic awareness, awareness versus revenue. Those are two very different animals. Like, if you don't spend time really thinking that through, that's the first step because then you don't actually know what the message is to either get to the table or maybe realize that quite candidly, this is an organization that is not going to be able to fulfill the expectations that you have as an SEO and how you want to show up every day. So the the, the reality here is understanding the connection of that business and its value drivers to SEO is absolutely critical. And, and that isn't just about, hey, I need to go have a meeting with the CEO about this. That is actually having meetings with everybody who supports the business. It's getting people on the CFO's department and getting their input and what they think about SEO and how their belief, their belief system is around the channel. The CMO and their organizational members, the CTO and the CPO and all the product individuals and how they expect and what they want from SEO. If you don't, if you're not collecting that from all those groups, you're gonna have a really hard time formulating the strategy, but most importantly, conveying the value to the organization or knowing full well that this organization isn't ready to invest. And that happens a lot, especially at startups. You get this great opportunity to go join a startup, but they actually don't have an organization that's prepared to invest and support SEO. So to answer your question very specifically and succinctly, because I can go on sometimes and I apologize for that. <laughs> it's really the ability for you as an SEO to understand how you're connecting to the business values and if those are aligned. Okay. Going back to your much more exciting scenario of there are all these organizations who are willing to invest, they get it. There's a wide variety of organizations now which will offer different different work-life balances. So if somebody was starting in the SEO world now, paint a picture for them of all of the different facets that they could could go down, all of the different routes that they could go down. Oh, boy. Well, maybe um, not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, there's a, a few, lot now, which is a great. A few of you know? them, a few of them. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, I think that uh, there's a couple of things that have changed recently that are really important to highlight. Um, just a few years ago, there were really kind of a couple of channels that you could go, right? There was this mentality of you can go in-house or you can go agency, right? That that was a reality. And, and fortunately for us, because of COVID, there's this new channel that really emerged in the SEO space, which is the freelancer, right? I saw a massive shift in the job market just before post COVID and for the years following COVID where the volume of freelancers, people who are leaving agencies, individuals and talent that were going away from being in house were saying, Hey, I, I want to be on my own. I, I don't, I don't want to be attached to this organizational function in these two paths. And I think that was great. We needed that because freelancers have always been a part of the SEO space. But in, in many cases, the, the talent and the quality of the talent in that job pool was really low. Um, a variety of reasons, right? Maybe there's language barriers, experience barriers, um, just the, 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 the ability to really um, support organizations in the right way was very, very restricted in that freelancer space. But today, I find freelancers who are top notch. And not only experts in the tactics, but also great at conveying the message, building the PowerPoint presentation to go to the to the CMO or whoever, the whole range and gamut. And I love that. And we needed that. And so there's this new channel now, which is the freelancer in the marketplace of talent has really evolved quite a bit in the last couple of years. And I think we should all be mindful of that because it, it allows us to create mobility 
if, if we feel stuck in a role. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's really changed is in these other two mm-hmm. traditional paths, go in-house or go agency, the volume of new channels, new categories of work has expanded tremendously. I mean, the other, the other month I had, a, I got a phone call um, and it was the craziest. I, I, I was just baffled by this call. I, I didn't, honestly, I really didn't know what to do. It was a, a railway company, uh, BNSF Railway, um, massive commercial rail company. They like ship, you know, all of the iPhones from the West Coast to the East Coast on these trains and do all that. And they call me up and they're like, hey, we want to do SEO. And I was like, I have no idea what to do for you. Like, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Like, I, I, you put stuff on a train and you move it. Like, how on, how on earth am I going to help you find people in Google? Uh, it, was, it was baffling. But this is, this is to the extent that SEO has, has gotten, which is all companies are thinking about the channel. And what it does is it should give you pause as an SEO to think, what kind of environment do I want to be in? What kind of company culture? What kind of product do I want to be associated to? Does it does it speak to me? Does it does it does it in, in, encourage me to be excited when I wake up in the morning because I'm working for a product that is uh, a nonprofit that's well funded? Awesome, that's a that's amazing. Then then you can go and find that SEO role. And those opportunities weren't here just five years ago. So that should give you pause to really find an environment that speaks to you. I'm just thinking if I ever thought I want to work for a company that is a train company that transports. <laughs> right. I, I'm still lost on that one, but I mean, I, uh, I definitely wish them fair, best of luck. Best I'm, of I'm here absolutely. to talk to you if you want to talk, but I don't know what to do. Oh, wow. <sighs> is there any difference in um, like geography? Are there any countries that are moving mm. faster than others? Oh, lovely question. And, uh, you know, um, working at search metrics for, for six years, um, I had this amazing opportunity to, uh, engage and work with many Europeans during that time, uh, and be very connected to both, not only the, the, the doc and German market, because that's where the company was founded and, and headquartered, but also many other, clients and customers through the Nordic or other regions in Europe. And, 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 and I really um, had a hard time believing this notion that was constantly shared with me, which is a Europe is a couple years behind in the SEO space compared to, you know, their, their North American counterparts. I, I never really believed that. I think that the, 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 the approach may have been slightly different uh, and, and some of the both cultural, but maybe even business environment uh, was was different. But I didn't necessarily believe that the talent and the mindset that was in Europe was was, was radically different uh, or or behind. I actually would learn a ton every time I talked to my European counterparts. Every time I talked to an SEO that was in in one of our clients, um, and so I think that's one of the things we really need to to steer clear from are these like blanket statement assumptions. Um, that we're like, oh, the entire European market is just behind on this. Not, not true and hasn't been for a long time, in my opinion. Um, and and, and if, if, if it even ever was to be, is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, when we look at other regions and other markets, uh, there's certainly some, some big differences. There's big differences in terms of how you execute on strategy, um, how budgets and, and decisions are made in these organizations and companies. Um, and even how they resource or think about resourcing SEO. Um, but one of, the, one of the beautiful things that we're seeing here at Previsible is that LATAM markets are really coming uh, a, a long way uh, in terms of their ability to, to, to develop talent, take someone who's a junior SEO and then grow them. And we're also seeing a lot of um, in-house mm-hmm. SEOs um, develop out of the LATAM market, which I think is super exciting because it used to be a heavy agency space. And that's, that's, again, part of that shift that we were talking about earlier. One of the interesting things that I I fundamentally believe is that as access to technology and as access to data has become more and more prolific in the SEO space, the talent level has equalized and has become much more um, 
normalized across markets. And, um, you know, and, and we have we have got give credit to, to some of the companies that have helped us do this. I mean, you, you look at a company like SEMrush, um, they have 100,000 customers globally and, and they're going to keep growing. And that's access to data. And that f- creates a level playing field for SEOs and SEO professionals. So to, to answer your question, sorry, again, overwinded response here, but it, it, it's really uh, the, the access to data and the access to technology at a faster pace has helped SEOs um, across all markets uh, level up. And there's, there's never been more of a level playing field with respect to the geography you're in. Also, COVID has helped there. I mean, I've seen so many talented SEOs. I got a friend of mine who, who used to work at Brafton, which was a big agency. He's a senior role there. He's just traveling the world. He was in South Africa last time I talked to him. Now he's in India. And guess what? That creates all these little connection points because he's talking to locals. He's beating up people at the coffee shop. And, and, and COVID has helped as that talent kind of expands its wings and goes into all these cities and markets. And, and I hope it continues because that, that's how knowledge and, and experience transfers. And, and that, that is the beauty. And as you were talking earlier about freelancers, if you want that sort of lifestyle, if you want to experience the different cultures and, and actually, you know, learn different skills along the way, not just SEO skills, then this is a great time to be to be in the place. Absolutely. 100%. All right, we're going to take a short break now and then return with even more interesting conversations. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the SEO Mindset Podcast. If you enjoy the podcast and our episodes, you can support me in Tasman by giving us a donation on our Buy Me A Coffee page. Uh, the URL is the seomindset.co.uk forward slash donate. You can donate as much or as little um, and, be, and we'd be very appreciative. You can also follow or subscribe to the podcast by going to the seomindset.co.uk forward slash listen. Um, So by going there, you can subscribe or follow um, on your podcast playing platform of choice. And this is a great way to be notified whenever a new podcast episode is live and ready for you to listen to. Okay, we are back now after a short break with, and I've got some more questions for Jordan. So we've been talking a lot about SEO. Let's move the conversation a bit more into learning and development. So how important is learning and development for SEO professionals? Well, you know, there's, um, there's this notion in the SEO space, right? Like, and, and I'm sure you've heard it, Tasman, and, and probably many of our listeners, like, you don't learn SEO in college or university or, or, or any of these institutions of education. Um, I mean, that, that is changing a little bit. I mean, we've recently partnered with a few University of California um, uh, institutions and, and, have, and have helped and encouraged um, uh, SEO to be part of their digital marketing and, and marketing um, functions and, and departments. Um, but, you know, the, the, the reality is that we're still not there yet. Um, SEO isn't like you're going to go to college or university and, and, and get like an accounting degree and you're going to have all these real, you know, strict accounting practices and processes that you're going to get trained in. It doesn't exactly replicate that way. One of my favorite quotes is that, uh, you can ask 10 SEOs a question and you're going to get 15 different responses, okay. um, which is, <laughs> I haven't heard that quote. <laughs> Which is, which is sometimes very true, right? Okay. I mean, it's like, um, and, and I think that's part of the challenge, right? Because SEO isn't uniform. It's not like, you know, gap accounting where, where every company can follow this process. It, it's like, yeah, well, I want to do tech SEO, but you might do tech SEO differently because you have a totally different tech stack and you're using a CMS. And then over here, we've got a in- homegrown in-house, you know, tech stack. And so, so it's not uniform. Um, the practices and the principles are pretty much the same, but the application is very different. So this leads us to where we need to be in our world and in, in, in the SEO world, which is we need to really think deep about training, development, and coaching. Our industry is one where the skill set has to be 
constantly developed and, 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 and expanded. Um, very similar to how a teacher every year has to go and get recertified and, and continue learning and continue developing their skill sets. Very similar to how a, 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 a mason or a welder has to go and get a certification and go through a, 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 an apprenticeship to really get the hours in to know how to do something very well. And I think that that is, 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 is where our training and development needs to go is taking kind of these principles that exist in these other, you know, old school industries and in many, many accounts and, and apply them to SEO so that when someone is new to the industry, they can come into this um, uh, certification process, be certified, and then have this apprenticeship and feel like they're being brought along a journey, not just thrown into some sort of fire pit of, an, of a startup and said, hey, grow my SEO. That, that's a terrifying scenario, especially if you don't have experience and knowledge and, 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 and the capabilities to execute the work. So bringing those types of practices into our industry and, 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 and creating um, those opportunities, I think is really where this, this training, development, and coaching is, is, is going to go for, for the SEO industry. So how well is that being implemented, in your opinion? Oh, you have to ask the hard ones, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not really well. <laughs> I mean... I'm going to ask an even harder one. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, and maybe the reason I say that is because I, I mean I have to look at myself because this is this is something that we believe strongly um, at Previsible and I and I believe strongly personally like it's it's part of my DNA that we have to be doing this training developing and coaching and and, and I don't think I, I, we and myself are doing a great job we're trying really hard um, and uh, but I think that it is it, it it's far from um, it's far from being at a place where it's 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 universally accepted for starters and it is not structured well enough uh, to to be able to have a conversation with all the different types of SEOs to to help them understand that depending on where you are in your career journey there are different tools or resources available to you um, if you're a, if you've been doing SEO for ten years and you worked at big companies like Adidas or this or that, like great, maybe what you need is coaching. Maybe you need to learn how to unblock yourself or how to train or develop your talent or you know how to how to how to better you know um, present to to your leadership team. And, and these are these are coaching practices. Um, if you're just getting started off at an agency and it's your first your first SEO job. There has to be a place where we can encourage that certification and that apprenticeship and that kind of that growth journey for for somebody. But there's no standardization, which is what the challenge is. So we're we're really far off. Um, but I'm very encouraged by the energy that is around this right now. Um, you know, I'm seeing so many people develop content. I'm seeing so much you know uh, content being published around training. Um, I just really hope that we can get to a place where. We can organize this in a way that helps someone grow and develop mm -hmm. and, and helps organizations uh, pull the right playbook or the right, the right resource at the right time. Because I don't think we'd get to a place where it was compulsory. But for example, with, with coaching, you've got the ICF and there are practices and ways that you coach and ethics behind it. And if you're serious about it, as, as I was, you invest your time and energy and your money in, in accreditation. And what that gives you is um, an awareness of, of the really important stuff. Yes, you have your own style, you have your own, um, your own niche, but those ethics and principles are so, so important. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. And and a lot of other industries are way ahead of us on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I think we've got, we got some room to grow there. So what would you say were essential skills and qualifications to succeed in the SEO market? Uh, <laughs> for, you know, for me, um, there were a couple of really great learning opportunities that I, that I experienced. And... Um, the first one right off the bat was that Spanish bookstore I mentioned earlier. 
um, you know, lear learning by making my own mistakes on my own business helped me a lot. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the path for everybody. And, and I'm very careful nowadays, um, especially when I talk to um, HR and other recruiters who are trying to hire talent. Um, that's become a real like characteristic that that those recruiters are looking for in SEOs. And, and, I, and I caution them because not everybody has to come from a background of build it yourself to learn. And, uh, and there are other ways to acquire the, these skills without building your own website or developing your own online business or so forth or so on. But that definitely for me personally was a, was a, was a key ingredient in my, my development journey. Um, the second one was, um, you know, I had an amazing boss uh, at eBay. His name was Robert Chowani. Um, and he, he was the, f one of the first SEOs at eBay. Um, but by no stretch of the imagination did he consider himself an SEO expert, but he taught me almost everything I know today about how to manage teams, how to manage relationships with key stakeholders like product and engineering. Um, and I made my fair share of mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I remember one time I, uh, I got into a meeting with a director of product um, and I, and I literally pounded my fists on the table and said, this is the dumbest idea ever. And you're an idiot and really got heated. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Robert gave me a day to cool off and <laughs> pulled me aside the next day and said, Hey, you know, that wasn't the right approach. Yeah. You know, that didn't build your character and isn't your character. And it certainly didn't build up, um, that partner. And lastly, it didn't build up the company. Um, and there's a lot more to that conversation, but like that was a real learning experience and then many, many more that Robert gave me over my career. And, and having that was those coaching moments that I needed to grow. Um, and again, we're now at a place of inflection in our industry where those coaching moments might not happen with your direct boss like they did for me. I'm very fortunate and I'm grateful for that. But they can happen through, you know, all these industry experts who've gone through those trials. They can help coach. They can help mentor. And, and find those mentors and find those coaches and never stop seeking them if you haven't found them. That's, I think, one of the things that's just really challenging in the SEO space is people, they say, oh, I've, I've been looking for a great mentor and I just can't find somebody. It just, it, it's a journey and you got to keep, keep seeking that out. Um, so that would be the second one. And then the third one for me in terms of my, my development was uh, this amazing opportunity to transition from just being a operator and tactician and um, just a, a thought leader in the space to being a executive um, and managing a company and being responsible for the entire PL, responsible for the, the livelihood and the salaries and the, the growth and the, the key decisions of a company. And fortunately for me, because I was at Search Metrics, I was able to do that in the SEO space. Um, and, and so that, that would be my, my third, um, you know great learning experience in, in, in my career. So I agree with you on the coaching. I, as a coach, can't now imagine any time when I wouldn't have a coach. Because if I'm always striving to improve, then that relationship is, is critical. May not always be the same. So I ended with um, a business coach. I've moved more on to an accountability coach at the moment because that's what's important for me. <clears throat> but um, otherwise, uh, you know, who's going to, not well, I don't, there's no one who forces you, but who's going to put a structure in place where you are consist consistently reflecting, um, looking at where you're heading, making sure it's mm -hmm. the right direction, making sure that you're performing the right tactics to get you to that place, um, dealing with the fear and because, you know, running your own business, I'm scared most of the time. Most of my days are scary days. <laughs> same here. We're in the same boat. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, I, I think the SEO industry is a way off understanding the role that a coach can play in, in their development. Yeah. And, and maybe sharing some, some similar personal stories for me, I... I've also transitioned my, my business coach. I, I transitioned away from an amazing business coach who, who helped me through some of the hardest times in my career um, and some of the most challenging things that I ever faced as, as a professional. Um, and I worked with him for 
better part of five years, um, you know, good chunk of my journey as a CEO at search metrics and then building up this, this new company and he helped me tremendously. But I knew that there was a big transition that I needed to make personally, which was the focus on my family. And I, I, I transitioned from, from this weekly, you know, ritual, we can call it of, of this, this training and development of, 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 with this one, one coach to, 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 to seeking new types of resources. And just a month ago, my wife and I started working with a parenting coach, um, mm-hmm. to help with, with our, with our youngest, we have three mm-hmm. lovely kids and I've got this partner in crime, my wife, who we we're, we're trying our best and, and we needed to, that transition. We, I, I, and we as a group needed to really change the way we were thinking about our daily routine. And, and, and I think that this is another part about coaching is that sometimes the personal pieces and the professional pieces, these aren't two like isolated worlds that just mm-hmm. like, you know, live in, a, in, in, in their own vacuums. They, they're all connected. And, 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 and you, if you wake up every day and you're excited about work and then you go home and you're drained and you're, you're, you're not happy to be there, it doesn't help. It, and it, it isn't going to make you happier as a person just because you're happy at work and vice versa. So, um, you know, we made that change and, and that's been a, a, a new, new part of my journey in, in, in coaching. No, that sounds great. So, and I agree with you, it's not about work and, and home and family. It's about the individual. And at the end of the day, as your your um your boss was telling you, eBay boss was saying that you know it didn't improve your character. To me, everything is a goal. Well, every challenge is there to make me refine my character more and more. Whether it's um, a challenge in the home environment, the work environment, the community environment, that's how I look at it. If I'm stuck on something, or if I'm cross about something I take a step back and say okay what am I supposed to learn something I'm not learning something and I know that if I don't learn it it's just going to stay in my life so <laughs> let's just get rid of this challenge quickly do the learning and move on <laughs> to the next one yep. no doubt no doubt love wow. that yeah so for for somebody listening to this conversation and you talked about some of the resources that individuals are creating um, what are the best resources that you would um, recommend? There's um, there's a couple of things that I that I would highly recommend. The the first one is, uh, you know, you, you you really have to start with 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 the basics. So if, if you're new to SEO or you're just getting your career started, get out there and acquire as much knowledge as you can from the trusted resources that are out there, whether it be Google and what they're publishing, um, you know, the, the, the news, SEO news related resources that exist in, in our industry, um, the, 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 the core um, basic trainings that are out there. A lot of people have developed everything from a master class to a Coursera. Get, get, get comfortable with the basics and, and feel like you're um, at a point where the basics become part of your story. And I think that's really important. And that's what I tell a lot of young new SEOs is it, you haven't acquired the basics until it's part of how you're articulating your story or your, your message or your, your request to partner X or whoever it is. When that becomes really natural, you've, you've gotten the basics. Now, now it's part of who you are and you're developing those skills. Um, then, then it, I think the next set of resources that is really valuable out there in, in our industry right now today is, um, there's never been an opportunity like right now to have conversations about SEO with all facets of the business. And I encourage this from everyone on my team. It it could be, you know, a sales guy on my team. It could be a, um, uh, a, a SEO technical SEO on my team. Go have conversations with people who aren't doing the SEO work. Go talk to your, you know, your accounting partner. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't know much about SEO, but when having those conversations sharpen your skills, right? They sharpen your ability to really articulate and know what you're doing every day. And then also get their vantage point. The more vantage points, the more viewpoints that you get about SEO, the more talented you're going to become as an SEO. And so I think that that's the second thing is I encourage everybody go have conversations with people who aren't directly involved 
or part of the SEO initiative or program in your organization. And then the last thing is, you know, go find those mentors. Um, it could be a coach. Um, there's many of them out there. Um, there, it could be a, a person in your organization, a, a leader in your organization, and 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 think really deeply about why you want that mentorship. Um, and this is this is the piece, right? That's really important. Mentorship isn't just about the connection with the person; that is part of the ingredient. But it's also about what's the what am I what am I receiving and giving in that relationship. And, and I think, you know, we shared both our personal journeys here with, with coaches, um, those change over time, those develop over time, um, having that, that moment of reflection to say, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and then going and seeking it is, is, is the third thing that I would highly recommend, um, SEOs out there to do. Our conversations have gone all over the place. (laughs) If you were to leave our listeners with one thought, what would you like to leave them with? So, so phenomenal question, Tasman, and I, 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 I want to leave our listeners with the encouragement that there is, um, there's no failure, there's no mistake, there's no um, misstep that uh, prevents you from from controlling your journey. And um, you know, if if my own personal career is an example of that, you know, when I was at eBay, we got hit with one of the biggest publicly announced. Google penalties in the history of Google's evolution. Uh, we were we were losing a hundred million dollars a month, and like I had to talk to the CEO and prep him for board meetings and meetings with Larry, Larry and Sergey at Google about what happened. Like I mean, I slept at eBay. <laughs> that, that's how serious this okay. was. And so I, I I want folks to recognize that like there is no failure that prevents you from owning your journey and owning your growth and owning your, your, your joy. And, and so just take that and, 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 and own that piece because it'll, it'll make you a much more fulfilled person, not just as an SEO, but, but as a professional and as an individual. Now that, the resilience that that would then build will carry you far, far, far. This is, this has been a great conversation. If people want to reach out to you, because we've come to the end of our chat today, where is it best to find you? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Jordan Cooney, uh, K-O-E-N-E. You can also email me, jordan at previsible.io. I'm happy to answer any questions or have a conversation. No, and and I thoroughly recommend it because it's been a a fun conversation for me, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jordan. So, and thank you to everyone listening for, um, for another episode of the SEO Mindset podcast. Uh, as, I, as I reminded everyone at the beginning, if you're enjoying the podcast and our episode and would like to re- um, support Sarah and myself, then there is a link to the Buy Me A Coffee um, page and the URL is in the show notes. And also, it would be really great if you could subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by, again, going to the seomindsetpodcast.co.uk forward slash listen, and then you will never miss out on any of our episodes. Um, So thank you again, Jordan. You're very welcome. (laughs) 